Praise the Lord. Why don't you close your eyes so we can pray. Father, we thank you very much for this time. We bless your name. We glorify your name, Lord, because of the great things that we have been doing in our midst since we came. Our Lord, we put ourselves as clay in the potter's sand. And Lord, we are praying that you mold us according to the pattern and according to the minister you want us to be. Lord, we pray that even this night, your hand will touch, your hand will mold everyone in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that you bless every one of us so that we can be channels of blessings to all the other people who are waiting for us back at home. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You give me a new year. Amen. Before you sit down. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We come back to our series in Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, we started reading and studying from verse 1. I'm going back to verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, it went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. When he saw the multitudes, I'm asking you a question. If a politician comes to the campaign spot, and while that politician gets there, he sees a sea of heads. When the politician sees the multitude, how does he react? How does he speak? How does he minister? How does he present his agenda? How does he present that to the multitude? When a politician sees a multitude, he's excited, he's wired up. Is stirred up and so if a minister comes and he sees the multitude and it's not stirred up and it's not wired up and it's not excited and he doesn't have new energy you are worse than a politician if a boxer if a wrestler comes on the field and then he finds where the people are sitting a multitude of fans and they come to watch him play box wrestle or maybe it's badminton or it's tennis when that player when that athlete when he sees the multitude how does he hurt how does he play how does he put all his strength all his energy Bad to himself, even while he's dying on the court, on the field, on the lawn, he gives his very best. If you are a minister and you come to a congregation like this and you see a multitude and it doesn't stir you up, it doesn't wire you up, it doesn't put something within you that this is my chance. What a day that a great multitude. It's before me. I may never have this chance again. If the thought of that, seeing a multitude, does not excite you, pump you up, and make you to be your very best, you are worse than an athlete. And if the people of the world, did you attend a night show before you became born again? Night club before you become born again when those musicians when they come and they see that all the tickets are sold and all the reserved seats are occupied and then you have overflow of the people that want to watch the night show all the overflow is outside and people are still struggling let me get in let me get in when those musicians when they see a multitude, how do they play? How do they sing? How do they dance? It's like their heart jumps to their head. It's like their very heart jumps to their feet. And then they become, they, be, they are beside themselves. And they go more, 100%, 150% than their preparation. If you see the multitude, and you are not excited and you're not wired up 
and your heart doesn't jump into your head, into your feet, into your mind to minister and to do the very best for the people of God. You are worse than those people in the nightclub. When he saw the multitude, he went up. He had no choice. See that multitude? He gave motion to his speech. He gave voice to his mouth. He gave message to his heart. You must tell these people something. A multitude. Didn't I tell you? 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. Which prophet ever saw a multitude like this? Samuel? Or Elijah? Or Jeremiah? Or Isaiah? And as Jesus came, and within a short time, a multitude gathered, he had to go up. There was no other thing to do. And then he went up to the mountain top. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. Why did those disciples come unto him? Did they hear the words of John the Baptist? If these keep quiet, God is able to raise up children unto Abraham out of these stones. What are they thinking in their mind? See, a multitude, we are not indispensable. A multitude is there. This master, this teacher, this savior, this Lord, out of this multitude, he can mold other people. Ah, let me take my place. And he came near the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your chance. Take your chance. There's a multitude. And because there's a multitude, Christ has the power to take and mold others to replace you i pray it will not replace you that is why those disciples when they saw the multitude and they looked at one another they said ah if i'm late if i don't hurry up if i don't give myself this christ has a multitude out of whom is it going to be difficult to choose 12 out of the rest of the multitude how long did it take to replace Judas Iscariot? It doesn't take time at all. That's why those disciples then, they came unto him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And you see, after they came poor in spirit, and they were contrite, and they were humble, and they were lowly. They didn't stop there. They moved on. You see, our Christian experience does not stop in verse 3. Christian experience does not stop in repentance, in conversion, in salvation. They moved on. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And Christian life doesn't stop there either. Christian life goes on after you have been comforted and after all your sins have been forgiven. After all the things we are mourning about, everything had been taken away. Now we come to verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You know, in the world, the meek is despised. The humble is not reckoned with. The lowly is supposed to be trampled upon the gentle or they will squeeze life out of you if you are gentle the submissive is like the worm and they tell them ah my son if you are warm if you are submissive you're going to the place of what you're going to the world now as you are going to the world if you bend your head if you put your hand at the back if you walk gently as if you don't have any spine my son the people of the world they'll take you like a worm and they'll walk on you and they thread on you and then you are gone that's what they tell the people in the world but you see the principle of christ is very very different are there people in the church that are working with the principle of the world ah if i am meek if i am humble if i am lowly if i am gentle 
if i am submissive ah these people they're going to work on me ah that's what the principle that's exactly what christ wants blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth to be meek is to be humble is to be lowly is to be gentle is to be submissive is to be patient is to be calm and quiet is to be unresisting unruffled and when things happen that they try to belittle you and they try to disregard you and they try to walk over you that's all right that's exactly what christ wants is testing you not they he is allowing that to be a test on you on your christian life whether you are lowly and humble or you are proud and haughty he wants to know but he wants you to understand is the unresisting and the unruffled when you are belittled when you are disregarded that's the one that is meek but you see the people of the world they go to the opposite they want to tell you i have self-confidence self-esteem self-assertion self-respect and so they want to show that no i'm not meek like that i cannot be meek like that but blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth the lord is telling us that we're not going to be like the civil rights people fighting for right fighting for this fighting for that be meek don't fight for anything because there's the mind of god and that is what the lord wants is this really a new revelation let's see psalm 37 in psalm 37 verse 11 but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace the meek shall inherit the earth and shall, shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace isaiah chapter 29 isaiah 29 verse 19 the meek also shall increase their joy in the lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the holy one of israel so you see then what the lord is calling us to this meekness of character this meekness in our disposition this meekness in our attitude to people that it will be visible other people be able to see that this is a meek humble lowly gentle submissive patient calm quiet or resisting or ruffled child of god and then you inherit there you have a lot of inheritance i divide the message to three points number one proper perspective of meekness the proper perspective of meekness number two proving people with meekness that is people in bible days flesh and blood like you and i men of like passions like you and i and yet they were meek proving people with meekness number three promised possession for the meek promised possession for the meek we're looking at the first one proper perspective of meekness in matthew chapter 5 verse 5 blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth the meek who are the meek what do you understand by the meek to start with the meek referred to here by christ number one they started from the first milestone they were poor in spirit they repented of their sins they became converted they entered into the kingdom of god not only that these ones are people have already mourned they have mourned for their sins 
they have mourned not only for their sins but for the sins of others that they influenced to see you see we are like a network we're like a network of people whatever i do affects another person i may not know that's affecting that person but you see we're not living like islands in isolation and therefore there are things you did in the past that affected other people and he said if so and so can do that and i love him i appreciate him he's my hero and he's bold and he's aggressive and i like the way he's violent and he doesn't take nonsense from anybody i like to copy him after you repented of your own sin then I about the people you influenced and they became aggressive and violent because of your influence on them now you are mourning and when you mourn then you heard that so and so has been converted then you go to him how did you get converted and he tells you the story and the lord comforts you one you have been forgiven you are comforted because of a personal sin and two you are comforted now because some of the people you influence to do wrong they have repented to you and now you have comfort and now after that comfort you are now meek this meekness it shows that you are grateful to god you are humble in the sight of god you appreciate him of the blessing of god upon your life and now the meekness is visible in your life but you need to understand something as you check the scriptures there are seven things that are connected with meekness and it is not meekness in isolation you know there are people that hear that meekness means to be humble and so if people tell them to commit sin they take it far and they say well we're to be submissive that's my leader and my leader is telling me that this is what to do my conscience is telling me that it is wrong my conscience is telling me that will dishonor the lord my conscience is telling me that will not be be my best that will contradict my cons my consecration that will contradict what i promised the lord i was going to do but my leader now says you are not submissive you are not submissive that's what we're saying if you're a child of god you must be me and you have more consecration than we have didn't you meet us here then you kneel down i'm sorry sir i forgot to be me i forgot to be humble and so you throw away righteousness in order to be me and you throw away truth in order to be me you throw away sincerity in order to be me there are things that are joined associated associated with meekness you cannot separate meekness from those things seven of them let's go one by one in psalms 45 psalm 45 verse 4 and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things number one meekness and truth truth and meekness god never calls you to a kind of meekness a kind of submission that makes you to throw away the truth that you know if you cannot keep the truth that meekness is useless that humility is useless humility in error humility in deception humility in hypocrisy humility in sincerity that's useless it must be truth and meekness number two i want you to look at sephaniah sephaniah chapter two sephaniah chapter two verse three seek ye the lord or ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgment seek righteousness seek meekness if you say you are meek you are humble you are submissive but there's no righteousness and you throw righteousness away in order to be meek 
That kind of meekness is of Satan. It's devilish. And it will not lead you to heaven. That's not the kind of meekness Jesus was talking about. It's the meekness that preserves righteousness. You see, many people don't understand. And they take all these things in isolation. And they compromise their faith. And they compromise their salvation. And they compromise their standing with the Lord. I want to be meek. I want to be meek. Therefore, no righteousness. They said, I'm too holy. They said, I'm taking this thing too seriously. They said, I don't fit into the mold of the, of the group. The old group is saying, this is what you do. And you want to isolate yourself. You are the old sister out. You are the old brother out. Righteousness, righteousness. As if you are the only one that had the message of holiness and deeper life who have been here before you. The meekness must preserve righteousness. If it doesn't, it's not of God. Number three. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Reading from verse 21. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 21. Watch will ye. Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness, love and meekness? You can't separate them. You see what the Lord is telling us? Blessed are the meek who are truthful. Blessed are the meek who are righteous. Blessed are the meek who are loving. The meekness goes along with the truth, the righteousness, and the law. Number four. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Meekness and gentleness. Have you ever found anybody saying, Ah, I am meek? Only is my nature to be sharp and to be hard and to be aggressive. Don't you know what I was? If you knew what I was, you'll not be talking the way you are talking. I'm a child of God. I am meek, but my language and my muscle and the way I carry myself, that's why you think I am hard. Yes, I know I'm hard. And yes, I know I'm aggressive. I even know I'm harsh. It doesn't go along with meekness. Meekness and gentleness. The meekness and the gentleness of Christ. That will be there. And if your meekness doesn't have gentleness, along with it, it's not complete yet. Number five, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Ephesians 4, verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, lowliness, humility, joined with that meekness, the lowliness must be there. What did Jesus say about himself? Matthew chapter 11. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. The meekness goes along with the lowliness. We're looking at Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Colossians 3, verse 12. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. The meekness goes along with humbleness of mind, humility. Then in seventh one, first Peter chapter three. In first Peter chapter three, reading from verse four. First Peter chapter three, verse four. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Meekness goes along with a quiet spirit. A, a quiet, serene, calm spirit. 
not turbulence inside you. And there's nothing that is going to talk, talk, talk and talk. There's quietness. There's calmness. Because you are meek. As we look at these scriptures then, we understand that the meekness that is acceptable in the sight of the Lord is joined and connected with truth. Connected with righteousness. Associated with love. With gentleness. With loneliness. With humility and with quietness of spirit. Meekness is one of the fruits of the spirit. And so if we are born again. And we have the fruit of the spirit. In the bunch. In that fruit you have meekness. In Galatians chapter 5. Reading from verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance against such. There is no law. Once again it's alright to read it in the Bible. But can you check up in your own life? You know we may have fruit in the market. And you may even tell us where to find the fruit. If you go to such and such a market, you find the fruit there. Do you have any fruit at home? Between you and your wife? Any fruit at all? Is there any fruit in your family? Do you have this fruit we're talking about? In the midst of the believers that you are working with? Do you have this fruit? Or is it only in the market? Do we find the fruit only in the Bible? Do we find this fruit only in the preaching? Do we find the fruit only in a doctrinal paper? Or do we have this fruit in your house? If we came to your house and we stay with you, will we have some fruit to take? Will you be able to nourish our lives with fruit? Do you have the love in your heart? The joy in your life? The peace in your soul. You have long suffering and patience. Can you endure? Or if anything comes on you, you want to show it immediately. I don't like that. I will not take that from anybody. And you want to react. What is the long suffering? Why do we have all the fruits in the Bible, all the fruits in the market, all the fruits in the paper, all the fruits in our program booklet? And we don't have it at home. We must have it at home. The fruit doesn't do any good in the market. It's when we take it out of the market and we bring it home. That's when the fruit will do any good. It's when we take it out of the Bible. Out of the Congress booklet. And we put it in our lives. And it goes with us back home. And we can find some fruit in our homes. That's when it does good. The love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, and the faith, the meekness, and the temperance. I pray God will give us more of it in Jesus' name. It enables us, this meekness enables us to submit to God and to quietly endure provocations for man without being inflamed. Provocations will come, maybe at home, in your neighborhood, in your office, in the house fellowship, in the district, in the church, at the congress. Wait until we finish tonight and we go out there. Wait until we begin to take our meal tonight. Provocations will come. And wait until we have finished everything and then we are finding a place to sleep. Provocation might come. And the meekness is what comes out at the time of that provocation. When you are willing to quietly endure all those provocations from man or from woman without being inflamed, without being on fire, the wrong kind of fire. Are there people like you and me? Men of like passions as you as I am, that prove that it is possible to have 
this kind of meekness yes there are many of them let me show you a few point number two proving people with meekness in their lives and we can see it and it shows very well let's look at numbers chapter 12 numbers chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 1 numbers 12 verse 1 and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married for he had married an Ethiopian woman now let's let's be sincere was this the real issue Miriam are you just getting to know this morning that that Moses married the woman that he married Aaron is this new information are you just getting this information that Moses got married to this kind of woman was he not away 40 years did you ever dream you will see Moses again didn't he already marry that same woman even her children before he came back and you were united together he was married at that time Miriam Aaron let's face the issue is the issue really the marriage or there's another thing behind it you know some of the things we're complaining about brother so-and-so sister so-and-so is that new information what you are complaining about what you are talking about didn't we know this man like that even 20 years ago this man had gotten married how many years now he had gotten children how many years now and then we're just talking about it now Miriam what do you say about this Moses what are you talking about this Ethiopian woman that uh, he got married to hey wait a minute he got married before the burning bush he got married before the revelation wait he got married before the call of God and God didn't complain he got married and had the children before he met Pharaoh he got married and he was manifesting the power of God and there was no problem he got married and he divided the Red Sea he got married and he gave you manna he got married and already here yeah, we have water out of the rock what are we talking about is this fresh information wasn't it there before and then they just woke up now it's envy and jealousy it's not because of the marriage and they said as the Lord is this spoken only by Moses as he not spoken also by us the way have we forgotten our history didn't God say I'll make you a God unto Pharaoh and Aaron will be your prophet I'll not speak to Aaron I'll speak to you you'll speak to Aaron Aaron did you go to the mount to receive the law from the Lord did God give you any of the commandments to give to the children of Israel Miriam why are we forgetting history so soon did God call you Miriam to give you any of the commandments for the children of Israel even the little baby in Israel knows that it's Moses that God had used to give the law unto the people of God in Israel what are we talking about you see where jealousy where jealousy can lead us where envy can lead us and then we begin to play with falsehood because this is not right and the Lord had it now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the earth upon the face of the earth the Lord said this man was meek how do we know he was meek the Lord knew the Lord says well, that's enough but we have evidence here too verse 4 and the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam come up come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation and the three came out and the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood 
in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam and they both came forth and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream my servant Moses is not so I'll be afraid to be on the side where God is not here is Moses and God has an opinion about Moses and Miriam and Aaron had a different opinion from God about Moses I'll be afraid to have a different opinion from God to contradict God on any issue especially on a minister of God God said Moses my servant is not so who is faithful in all mine house Miriam what are, what were you telling me oh you are telling me that Moses is unfaithful his marriage is not right and God is saying shut up that I don't have any problem with Moses because at that time Moses didn't even know he'll come back to Israel and he just when do you want him to get married you want him to get married after the age of 80 after hearing my call he was already 40 years of age before he went to the backside of the desert before he went away from Egypt when is he going to get married if he doesn't marry at 40 what are you talking about and if I'm not complaining about that Aaron and Miriam what's your problem what are you complaining about and then God said he is faithful in all my house with him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid that's God talking using the word afraid afraid to speak against my servant Moses and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous and Aaron said unto Moses alas my lord I beseech thee lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb and Moses cried unto the Lord and said heal her now O God I beseech thee that's meekness no retaliation no wrathful spirit no anger no revenge and no pointing of the finger Miriam you see now I told you because you are my senior brother no senior sister no respect because you know my history because you picked me up at the riverside when Pharaoh's daughter came to the riverside and because you know all my history from infancy until this time and then you are a woman and you are my senior sister and because this foreigner that I married and then took your place you wanted to be near me as my senior sister and now because I'm married and when I came back uh, you know we had a little problem a little uh, disagreement and she was saying with well, the father Jethro now brought her back and you cannot stay in the place you used to stay now you are jealous you see how you are leprous now now you will know who has the power of God never not Moses Moses had pity Moses had compassion Moses had sympathy and Moses cried unto the Lord he said Lord now now at this time heal her don't let her remain like this oh Lord are you not trying to fight for me are you not trying to defend me I'm the one you are defending I'm the one that says please heal her I don't want her to suffer 
she's my senior sister i don't mind she has a right to talk about me aaron is my brother they are older than me god i don't mind please forgive them heal them that is meekness not wanting people to suffer because they offended us not wanting to crush them destroy them and put them to public shame because they offended us that's meekness and that's what we find in this moses let's see another one this is abraham in um, genesis chapter 13 meekness remember meekness submitting totally to the will of god and quietly enduring provocation for man without being inflamed without getting angry without getting disturbed without getting ruffled genesis chapter 13 and i'm reading from verse 5 genesis 13 verse 5 and lot also which went with abraham at flocks and herds and tents and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together and there was a strife between the herdsman of abram's cattle and the herdsman of lot's cattle and the canaanites and the parasite dwelt then in the land and abram said unto lord let there be no strife I pray thee between me and thee between my hard men and thy hard men for we are brethren he was the older one he was the one that had the call of God he just took Lord along with him and the Lord blessed Lord and the Lord had blessed Abraham and their herds were multiplying and their herds men were multiplying and then there was disagreement between the herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham. Abraham heard about it. Meekness made him not to get angry, not to get offended. Just called him and said, Lord, did you hear about what is happening between the people under you and the people under me? Now, what do you know about Abraham? His servants were trained. I'll show you later. And his servant could actually finish all the servants of Lord in a, in, a, in a few days. But he wouldn't do that. He will not use his power. He will not use his trained servants to crush or to finish Lord and his own servants. He just called him and said, Lord, we are brethren. There shouldn't be any quarrel. Then this is what he said in verse 9. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, for me. If thou wilt take the ledge, then I will go to the right. You understand meekness now? You are not offended. You are not fighting for your right. You are not fighting for any property. And then he also said, If thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the ledge. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the guardian of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Look up here. You know, sometimes that's what we're saying. Don't leave this thing inside the book lift it up from the book and bring it home with you here we are in a congress and we need to buy food maybe rice maybe flour to bake our bread to give to congress participants and you are being maybe buying and then a friend just came and said you know i'm out of pocket i don't really have any money and uh, the church is you know this time congress is coming they want to buy rice and they want to buy this and that would you mind please if you introduce me to the people in charge as they are almost you know making use of you all the time why don't you help me you see i have nothing at all and then you say please come then you come to the people who are organizing arranging the buying of the food for the congress 
You say, this is our brother, this is our sister. A dependable brother, a dependable sister. Although I've been getting uh, what, whatever you call it, the opportunity to buy everything. I'm willing to concede part of the thing to my brother here, my sister here. He has more need than I have. And then they agreed. And eventually now, after doing everything, a few days. And then the fellow you brought in now saw how to get it done. As the retreat is coming, another program. She knows, he knows that, aha, uh -huh, buying is going to start. And then he goes behind and begins to tell stories about you. See, that brother who was buying this same before, before I came in, I know what he has been doing. He has been cheating the church. The place he went to buy this thing, I went there. And in fact, he added 50% extra. And, and you heard. And you said, what? This fellow I introduced to the church. This fellow I introduced to the scene. I was doing it alone. And the church trusted me. And this person went behind. He went to the people I'm buying from. And he went to the church. See what he has done. Uh -huh. If we will lose salvation on this one, we will lose salvation. I will not stand there and open my eyes. And somebody will take market away from me. It will not happen here. And you lose salvation. Why don't you do like Abraham? And say, Lord, you don't have meekness. You have it only in the book. You have it only in the head. You have it only in doctrinal paper. You have not taken meekness away uh, with you home. Take everything if you want to take. And you have nothing against the church. You have nothing against our coordinators who are handling the buying and the provision. You have nothing against anybody. You are me. That's what Abraham did. That's what we are talking about. We have not come here only to study and fill our heads with knowledge. We want to fill our hearts with real virtue. And so eventually, then Lord chose all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east. And they separated themselves one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. And Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain. And pitched his tent towards Sodom. Come to chapter 14. Verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel. King of China. Ariok. King of Elasa. Said of Laome. The king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, that there, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and then with the rest of them, and of Gomorrah. And eventually, Abraham had about it. Look at verse 11. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way, and they took Lord. Abraham's brother who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and they departed and there came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite brother of Eshcol the brother of Anna and these were confederate with Abraham somebody came to tell Abraham and said Abraham how many years do you have two ha I'll tell you something interesting today. You know these people, these young people, they think they are wise and they think they are fast. What are you talking about? Lord, what happened? Ah, you have not heard? You are not listening to news? A war broke out. And all the all these people, even Lord himself, wife, children, everybody, the two can be one captive. How about his property? Uh -uh. You are talking about property. They're taking everything. If you were sanctified, deep alive preacher, how will you react? My wife, come. You, this God, it's good to serve this God, though. I'm telling you, the people who cannot fight for themselves, God will fight for them. Ah, uh, you think we're attending fake cleaning for nothing? Pastor, keep on preaching this way, Cleco. This thing is working. Lord, Pastor, I have testimony to give. 
Abraham did not rejoice because of the downfall of Lot. Meekness. You are not offended. You are not trouble. What did he do? Let's see what he did. In verse 14, when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and he pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Obab, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods. And also, he brought again his brother Lord, and his goods, and the women also, and the people brought everything back. He went to hell. He abandoned his own project. And he stopped every other thing. This fellow that hurt me, I must help him. That's meekness. If he was angry, still nursing how to revenge, how to retaliate, he wouldn't have done that. Why don't we become real Christians? That whatever people do, however people have acted, it will mean nothing to us. Because our reward is coming from the Lord. And we're not going to fight for ourselves. That's how to be meek. And blessed are the meek. They are the people that are going to inherit the earth. Look at chapter 18 of Genesis, verse 17. 18, 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the sin which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nation of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will com command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great... And because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham remembered that Lord was there. Oh, he could have said, that's all right for him. I've, I've done enough. What else will I do? After he separated from me, and those people came, they made war with Sodom, and they carried them away. He didn't learn his lesson. I was the one that put all my 318 soldiers, trained servants together, and then we ran after them, and we defeated those people, and brought his wife and his children, everybody, even his property, we brought everything back. Even after I did that to him, do you know that this man, this young man, he didn't even say sorry. He didn't say, now I realize. All the bad things I've done. Abraham, I've offended you. He never even thought about that. And he went right back into that Sodom to settle down. Now God says, it's going to destroy Sodom. That's his cup of tea. I'm not concerned anymore. I will not help him anymore. When you are meek, there's no end to the help you render. You know, sometimes uh, in your Christian life, you brought somebody maybe to be with you. And then some things happened. And really, it was not good. And he, the, the fellow was wrong. And eventually, the fellow had to leave. And after he has led, then you breathe and said, Thank God that fellow has led. Now I can rest. In my mind, in my marriage, in my family, now I can rest. You know, all that kind of trouble. Trying to accommodate these people and trying to help them. Now that she is gone, now she is gone. Praise the Lord, now I'm free. Then you hear that where he has gone, he has now gotten into trouble. Uh, thank God that the trouble even didn't come upon him while he was in my house. I would have been involved. I would have to do something. But now the fellow is gone. Good luck to you. And if the fellow comes and he says, uh, Uncle, uh, yes, what's the matter? Uh, I really, I mean, I'm in hot soup. I'm in bad shape. There's real problem. Uh -huh. You know, Uncle, now. When you were here, you didn't know, Uncle. 
when you were parking your load you didn't know uncle now you get into trouble go and solve your problem that's not christianity meekness you'll forget what he has done you will forgive you will show love you'll be meek and then eventually now because Abraham knew that this man is there and God is going to rain fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. He began to pray. That's why he said in verse, uh, in verse 23, Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? But adventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein that be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of the earth do right and the lord said if i find in sodom fifty righteous within the city then i will spare all the place for their sins you remember the prayer he went on and on and he came to ten eventually the angels came they came to sodom and then they delivered lord why did they deliver lord chapter 19 verse 15 and when the morning arose then the angel says in lord saying arise take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city and while he lingered the men that is the angels laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters the lord be merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said escape for thy life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed my question is why was this man delivered verse 29 and it came to pass when god destroyed the cities of the plain that he remembered abraham and sent lord out of the midst of the overthrow when you overthrew the cities in the which Lord dwelt. Do you see that? It was because of the prayer of Abraham. And that's what the Lord is calling us to. That we too will manifest that same kind of attitude. That same kind of meekness. If they were able to do it, we are well able in Jesus' name. We come to point number three. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 The promised possession for the meek The promised possession for the meek Matthew chapter 5 verse 5 Blessed are the meek For they shall inherit the earth That's the promise of God And God is able to fulfill his own promise Let's see Psalm 37 Psalm 37 I'm reading from verse 11 but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall dwell shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace verse 18 in verse 18 the lord knows the days of the upright and the inheritance shall be forever 19 they shall not be ashamed in the evil time in the days of famine they shall be satisfied verse 29 the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Verse 34. Wait on the Lord. Keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Psalm 25, verse 9. Psalm 25, verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. It's when you are humble, you'll be teachable. And when God sees you are humble, you are submissive, you are resisting, you are ruffled under provocation, it will be easy for the Lord to guide you and to teach you in the way that you ought to walk. Psalm 22, reading from verse 26. 
The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among nations. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Reading from verse 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Isaiah chapter 29. In Isaiah chapter 29, verses 19 and 20. Isaiah 29, verse 19. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and his corner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are caught off. If you really want the blessing of the Lord upon your life, an inheritance has promised to his own children, become humble, become lowly, and become submissive, become gentle. In a word, become meek. Calm and quiet. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil. The meek, the lowly, the humble, the gentle, the submissive, and the one that has the quality of the character of Christ. It says, not rendering evil for evil. Or really for really, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. If you are meek, and you, know, you don't give yourself to the character and the disposition of retaliation, wanting to fight back, or even when you are not fighting back, something bad is happening to the other fellow, you're not rejoicing because of that. Then it says, you will inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no girl. Let him eschew evil, shun evil, avoid evil, despise evil, flee from evil, and do good. And let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. For the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I pray the Lord himself will make us meek. And the meekness of Christ will become our character, our nature in Jesus' name. Then will the promise of the Lord be fulfilled in our lives. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Let's rise up and pray to the Lord. That the Lord himself will help us so that we'll be able to manifest this meekness that we'll see in Abraham. We'll see it in Moses. We've seen it in other people too. And above all, we've seen it on the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Blessed are the me. Would you say you are meek? Even to immediate family members. Are you aggressive? Harsh? Hard? Overbearing? Cruel? You want to have your pound of flesh? You must take it back on them. That's not Christ like nature. That's not even the nature of Abraham in the Old Testament. That's not the nature of Moses. 
a great leader in the Old Testament. And Christ our Lord and Savior. That's not his nature. As a man, are you meek? Or do you feel that a man should not be meek? A man should not be humble. You are a man. You can only show that you are a man if you are proud. If you are aggressive, you are demanding. That's not of Christ. Come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. He wants us to be meek and humble, to be lowly, to be gentle, and to be submissive to you, to be patient, to be calm and quiet, unresisting, unruffled, under unruffled, provocation. They will provoke you. Maybe not here, over there. Maybe even here. Provocation will come. Well, the fire of destruction born in your soul, in your heart, when provocation comes, or will you manifest the gentle nature of Christ and you quench that fire? And you don't make the church of the living God a battleground for serving the Prince of Peace. It's not the captain of a destructive army. Women, are you meek? Are you trying to pay it back to the men? Don't you know the quiet spirit and the meek and the gentleness especially belongs to gracious women? Humble, lowly, Gentle as a worker, as a leader, do we have to fight with our overseers to maintain our position? Do we have to fight for a particular position. I'm looking at the way the overseers looking at me. If I don't, uh, you know, take a very serious stand, if I don't screw my face and do something that I'll not take any nonsense from any leader. It's like to remove me and before he carries out his project, let me carry on my own project and intimidate him. That's not Christianity. That's not Christianity. Whatever you have and keep by force will not have any reward in heaven. You might even lose your soul. Meekness is the quality of character we find in Christ. A meek and lowly. That's what he wants from you. If you cannot keep your position by being meek, give up the position. Rather be meek than keep your position. Give up that position. Not worth it. You cannot keep a ministry except by being aggressive. Give up the ministry. That's not worth it. If you cannot keep an office by being gentle, lowly, mild, loving, meek, submissive. If you cannot keep your office by meekness, give it up and hold on to meekness. What are you going to gain? You gain an office, gain a ministry, gain a privilege. And then you lose meekness. What do you have left? Is the ministry or the preaching or the whatever is he going to take you to heaven? Meekness. Blessed are they that are meek, they shall inherit the earth. Are you teachable? Since you became a, a great worker, effective worker, a dynamite, and now everybody is praising you. Are you still teachable? Can we talk to you? Can we correct you? Can we ask you any question? Why did you do that? Meekness is gone. Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit the earth. And your meekness must be kept on the truth. 
The submission is not worth it if you give up sound doctrine. If you come in sincere, hypocritical, that meekness then is not worth anything. Meekness and truth. Meekness and righteousness. The submission is of no value if he doesn't have righteousness associated with it. Pray. Let's get this message out of the book and get it home with us. The fruit is of no use in the market. Get it out of the market, bring it home. That's when the fruit becomes useful, profitable. The fruit of meekness, the fruit of humility, the fruit of lowliness, the fruit of gentleness, the fruit of submissiveness, and the fruit of patience, the fruit of quietness and calmness, the fruit of Unresisting, unruffled character. Bring it home with you. Between you and your wife, you and your husband, you and your parents, you and your children, you and your neighbors, you and the co tenants, you and the co workers, you and fellow believers in the church. Bring this fruit back home with you. Truth and meekness. Righteousness and meekness. Love and meekness. Gentleness and meekness. Lowliness and meekness. Humility and meekness. Quietness of spirit and meekness. Did you see what Miriam and Aaron said against Moses? Are you the Aaron? Are you the Miriam? As your life so become degenerate that you cannot pass a day without talking negative about Moses the leader have you become so backsliding that you cannot spend a week without chewing the leader like tree stick in your mouth And if you are the leader that those people are speaking against, are you meek? Would you still be able to pray for Aaron and Miriam? Are you like Abraham? Meek? Patient? Lowly? No revenge? no retaliation check up take meekness back home with you don't let it stay in the market don't let it stay just in the book take it home with you meekness then the promise of the lord will be fulfilled in your life blessed are the meek Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. They shall inherit.